So even with me giving all of the swing rounds to Fury and me being very charitable in my interpretation of, of so many shots and giving Fury extra leeway, he still loses this fight. And now this body shot by itself isn't like a crazy scoring shot, although you can see the force reverberate throughout Tyson Fury's body. Again, the jiggle is a good force indicator. We are in the last two championship rounds and my devil's advocate card for Fury reads six, five, six points to Usyk, five points to Fury. It's an odd number of 11 points going into the 11th round because of the, the 10, eight extra point from round nine. Now let's talk science, hit that like button. I love how Usyk starts so many of these rounds. You can tell he's coming out aggressive because of the bounce and the activity with the lead hand. I always say that's a signifier that he's going to go on the offensive and he's entering in and this shot doesn't really land too clean, but it's not really about the, the physicality of actually scoring in the sequence because neither of them really score anything effective. It's just about setting the tone. It's more of a mental thing than it is a physical. And Fury's having trouble settling in because of how Usyk started the round. And when when Fury finds himself in the corner, there's generally a couple of options that he relies on. Now, there's some exceptions, but generally it's one of two things. One of those two things is he's in the corner, he's reactive and he's he's extra reactive. He's waiting for Usyk to cross a certain invisible line, especially with the jab and a level change because Fury's going to be looking for the uppercut. But in this instance, he goes with the other option. He uses that jab to make room and he's going to see if Usyk is going to try and start something. If Usyk's not starting something, then he you know, finds his way out of that corner with the feints using his jab and he circles out of that bad position. Now that's one of the ways he responds when he's in the corner. So far in this 11th round, two minutes and 11 seconds, Usyk lands a, a big jab right there. That's the biggest shot of the round so far. Fury turns mostly away from that left, although it partially lands. Yeah, this 11th round, they just traded a couple of jabs and, and some body shots from Usyk. A few seconds ago, they traded some decent moments in the clinch. But after they separate, Usyk gets underneath the lead hand of Fury like how he's been doing, lands a big left to the body. I mean, they're big, but they're, they're not like super impactful to Fury, but you can tell the impact of the shots by the jiggle on Fury's body. That's how I'm starting to measure the effectiveness of these body shots. Are they hurting Fury? No, but they do have a lot of force behind them and he lands a nice left overhand right there. But the jiggle in his body is kind of like my force indicator. Now, the, the other one of the two responses Fury has to being in the corner, waiting for Usyk to enter and Usyk faints right there. You can see Fury's reactive. He's he's itching, waiting for Usyk to enter in behind that jab and a level change. As soon as Usyk starts crossing a certain amount of space, he crosses that invisible line, that end, that's what we refer to it as. He crosses that invisible line. Fury is looking for that uppercut. And it's hard to say if that lands, but for the sake of argument, we will give that to Fury, just for the sake of argument. Notice Fury's posture. He's relaxed until he sees Usyk creeping and, and, and stepping across that range. And uh, Usyk partially lands a jab and he tries to dig a body shot right there. And it actually does land good body shot from Fury. Once they disengage, they trade good jabs right here. Usyk comes over top. Fury comes underneath. Usyk's jab lands more clean, but Fury does have a nice up jab that lands as well. Now, Fury still likes that two five combo to cross into the lead uppercut, throws the cross, mostly uh, gets blocked on the guard, but this lead uppercut does land and you can tell because Usyk's ne neck and he uh, head snap to the side, but Usyk also lands a big left hand of his own. He gets hit with a cross right there. So they trade some big shots, but Fury does land more shots, but Usyk's shot is also a big shot. Now, the same type of praise for Usyk coming out after that sixth round and still fighting being strong fury deserves some credit too obviously we know it's it's hard to put this man down i mean he got almost knocked unconscious by by wilder eyes rolled in the back of his head got up off the ground like the undertaker and started boxing wilder's head off and then here he he was bouncing from rope to rope like he was back in the wwe in that ninth round but then he comes out in the 10th and he slowly starts to regain and now he's in the 11th and he's back in the fight so he deserves a lot of credit for coming out and, and showing heart and, and showing that even through a concussion, he still, he still can box. He still can fight. He's still giving Usyk trouble. Now they're both trying to time each other's entries. Fury is fainting, trying to get Usyk to come in and you see Fury faint and then back up. He's waiting for it. He's waiting. He's waiting. And he, he puts that lead hand out expecting Usyk 
to step in. That's what Usyk does. Usyk comes over top, lands a great jab that knocks the head of Fury back. And he circles around that outside foot like I've been doing. Positioning is, is so crucial for Usyk's defense to avoid so many of these shots. And I personally think that shot misses because that you see the green around the side of Usyk's body where his arm would be. So it looks like that shot lands around. It doesn't land. It goes around the side. But for the sake of argument, I will also count that for Fury. And at the end of the video, it won't matter. But for the sake of argument, I'm giving Fury extra credit here. Now, I often talk about shots not being super effective, but still getting good reactions. This is an example that actually favors Usyk. Normally, it favors Fury. So Fury is jumping back. Boom, gets hit with a left. It doesn't really land that clean. But then another left comes. And you see Fury kind of like jumping back and his head kind of turning. Those types of moments look good to the judges. And that is in favor of Usyk rather than Fury, like how it's been so many other instances during this fight. Here we have a repeat of the most common sequence in the fight. Usyk setting up an entry behind the jab, jumps over top. Sometimes it's level change, sometimes he jumps over top, whatever he's trying to enter in behind the jab. And Fury trying to take that jab or uh, you know roll with that jab so he can land that, that body shot counter or sometimes uppercut to the head. It's a backhand uppercut basically. And then Usyk trying to catch him as Fury exits. So that's what they're trading. Jabs and uppercuts, jabs and uppercuts, jabs and uppercuts. And for the sake of argument, again, we'll give that body shot to Fury even though we can't see it. Now, let me explain, even if I'm giving Fury shots that may or may not land, and some of them probably don't, why that doesn't matter too much. And it's because of Usyk's approach to this fight and his approach to boxing, particularly in, in versus Fury. When Fury has any big moments, Usyk ups his aggression, he ups the pressure, and he immediately starts to look for his opportunities. Boom, big swivel jab over top, he jumps into it, gets underneath the left and the right of Fury, and then he catches Fury again with the right hook that mostly lands on the neck. But Usyk, Usyk does not allow Fury to have any isolated moments of success. If Fury has a, a, a big shot that lands, Usyk steps on the gas. He starts fainting. He starts bouncing. He tracks Fury down. He tries to land some good shots in a combo or a good swivel jab or a good right hook or a good left overhand or a good body shot. So whenever Fury has a big moment, Usyk tries to take away some of that shine and it works. It's, it's hard to, it's hard for Fury to have isolated moments of success. And then uh, when no one's paying attention to the big shots, all of those small shots from Usyk, all of the small moments, Usyk is tagging that body. Usyk is winning the jab battle. And so even the small shots, Usyk is winning. And then with the big shots, Usyk isn't allowing Fury to shine. Now, this is my favorite part of the fight. This great cinematography where the cameraman is right behind Fury's enormous body. So we can't see what's going on. That cross may partially land. And then Fury tries to lean on him, but Usyk gets that forearm block that wall that barricade between him and fury which doesn't allow fury to get full control and he uses that as a point of leverage to push off he drives with the shoulder and then fury is landing some little sneaky shots to the ear uh in the middle of that little clinch exchange but here's an example of what i was just talking about they disengage and what does Usyk do he ups the pressure you can tell when he starts getting that bounce and he enters in right hook doesn't land but this big left right here Wham! Big shot knocks Fury's head over the ropes. Fury cannot have any isolated moments of success without Usyk trying to swing and knock his lights out, at least uh, around the time of that moment that Fury has some success. Now, even when I'm being charitable to Fury and giving him shots that we don't see land and that the AI probably doesn't count, considering that it has 30 different camera angles, which is far better than what we have available. Even with all of that, uh, taken into account. Usyk is just landing so many big shots and he's winning, winning all the small moments. So that's still his round seven, five, seven for Usyk, five for Fury. Now, similar to the last round, Usyk starts off aggressive and you can tell once he starts establishing that bounciness and that lead hand gets active, he's fit to initiate some offense. What he does right here is what he's had so much success with right shoulder gets inside Fury's left. He gets underneath, big up jab, knocks Fury's head back, and Fury tries to counter with an uppercut. Boom, lands on the guard. Usyk approaching with that slip feint, slowly invading territory, pushing Tyson Fury back, getting reactions out of him. Tyson Fury's extending that lead hand. The next time he extends that lead hand, whoop, he gets inside of it, jab, lands again. 
Now this body shot by itself isn't like a crazy scoring shot, although you can see the force reverberate throughout Tyson Fury's body. Again, the jiggle is a good force indicator, but it does set up this big overhand that Usyk is about to enter with. So he steps in behind a level change, jab to the body, but then he lines up a big overhand and he jumps, he jumps off of the ground into this cartoon Superman punch that knocks Tyson Fury's head back and he almost falls over the rope. These are some strong ropes to hold up Tyson Fury. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I think when he got hit with that left hand, it woke him up. You see him start rolling with these shots and then he, once he breaks off versus Usyk, you see the aggression turn up and he steps forward with some combos and now Tyson Fury is activated in this 12th round. Now I must say again, I'm so surprised that this combo wasn't more common. Jab that obviously lands on the guard, but it brings the guard around the center as Fury circling lands, the, doesn't land this left uh, cuffs around. The, he lands on the other ear of Usyk. That's what I mean. That that left hook, that left hook of Fury is, is so hard to avoid. It's, you, you can't pull away from it because if Usyk tried to pull away, he would have got blasted on the ear. You just got to duck or get your guard around in time. But Fury's arms are so long that not only does it cuff around the neck, it lands on his other ear. That's what Fury used that uh, missed left hook to, to cuff Fury, uh, not cuff Fury, cuff Usyk and bring him into some a decent body shot right there. Uh, it's all right. And then uh, a grazing head shot. But he's landing, you know, some occasional shots, decent body shot right there. Again, uh, you can tell Usyk is about to initiate an attack. The bounces and the activity from the lead hand. Fury is putting out his lead hand. He's about to stiff arm Usyk in the face in a second. And there it is. He's trying to stiff arm uh, Usyk, but that lead hand also allows him to properly like gauge when an attack is about to come. So he turns away from that left and then he gets put in that corner and he's those long tendrils is like catching and deflecting shots. And then he's yeah, he's just he's hard. Sometimes Tyson Fury is hard to hit when Tyson Fury isn't completely concussed and he does have respect for your power. He is hard to hit. But this is a great move from Usyk right here, too. He Fury tries to put that big body over top of him. He tries to drape over him like a, a cover on a bed and Usyk, that right arm is partially controlled by Fury, but it's not like a strong overhook. But Usyk has that left arm free and he's going to use the surface area of that forearm and, and that right shoulder, the, the left forearm and the right shoulder. And he's going to drive from the legs and just shuck Fury off of him and actually throw him quite far because he drives from the legs and he has some freedom to move with those arms and position with the shoulder. Usyk is going to enter with a jab to the body underneath the extended lead hand of Fury. And then it's going to set up another one of those big left Superman punches. And although Fury slightly turns away from it, you can see it gets a big reaction out of him, knocks his head back. Big shots from Usyk in this round. You can tell Fury is looking for something by his body language, kind of leaned over the front foot and he throws that jab out. Jab lands on the guard. Cross gets blocked. Usyk's high guard is coming in handy in this particular scenario. Lead uppercut partially lands on Usyk and then it lines him up for the cross that does partially land on the chin, maybe a little bit below it. But regardless, it looks like a nice scoring shot. And the this was funny. The shot that does land on Usyk the most is the shot where Usyk pulls away from his high guard. So that high guard is very useful in avoiding a lot of these big shots from Fury. In the moment that it leaves, Fury is able to get a shot through. Fury does one of the smarter things he's done in this fight and, and something he should have done more of. He's going to jab to push Usyk back, but Usyk is the hunter. He's a Tasmanian devil. So his job is to close the distance and to keep pressure on Fury. That's the primary thing to keep pressure on Fury. So once he gets backed up, he's out of range. His immediate goal and Fury knows this is his immediate goal. His immediate goal is to get right back into range. That in and out movement makes it difficult for so many opponents. But at the same time, if you know when to expect that in and out movement, you can time it. That's what Fury does. Fury jabs to reset Usyk. And as Usyk is coming back into range, he times that forward momentum to land a big right hook on Usyk. That's his biggest shot of this 12th round so far. Usyk is starting his entry the same, but the end of this combo is different. Enters in with the jab. There's primarily two uh, entries for Usyk. Jab standing up or, or like a level change jab to the body entry. Generally, those are, are the two primary options, but he initiates most of his stuff behind the jab. That's what he does here. And he jabs into the level change 
and he stabs the body and that's what he's been doing a lot of this fight entering behind the jab stabbing the body but the ending of this combo is different instead of just stopping there he jumps over top with a big gazelle hook that again whips fury's neck one way or the other big shots that have big impact and score highly now of course fury isn't like i said fury isn't hurt by most of these shots because he sees them coming the shot that hurt him the most was when he was on the front foot not respecting his head got knocked to the side and when he pulls his head back to the side he runs straight into a left hand and that's why i hurt him so much because he didn't see the shot coming but he sees these shots coming and so he's mostly just shaking them off but regardless of if he's concussed by them or not they're still scoring shots that are winning Usyk rounds fury trying to circle around to his left Usyk times him circling to the left with a big right hook that lands on the chin. And then Fury also smacks Usyk upside the head with a big right hook that lands on the ear, knocks Usyk off balance because he was in a bad position. But of course that looks, you know, way worse to the judges, which is fair. Now this 12th round is the best round from Fury in the second half of the fight. His recovery, like we said, obviously he's Tyson Fury. His recovery is great. Flicks out a jab. It mostly misses, but it lines up the cross as Usyk tries to step in. Partially knocks him off balance, resets him. Fury shots are so heavy. But as we pointed out, like a few times by now, a few seconds later, you see Usyk up in the aggression. Lead hand, bounciness is coming. He's finna, he's finna enter in. That's what he's doing. You see, there it is, there it is. Right to the body. Not a super impactful shot but he's trying to throw this combo, missing most of these shots. Fury tries to close the distance. He gets underneath that, and then he lands uh, a nice right overhand to the chin. Now, Fury's shot earlier was more impactful, but regardless, Usyk isn't giving Fury his solitary moments to shine. Usyk is stealing the shine just about every time in this fight. Great camera angle again as Fury uh, covers the entire action, and Usyk steps in with a big gazelle jab that knocks Fury's head back. And then Fury tries to answer with an uppercut, but you can see it lands on the guard. Partially does get around, but not that good of a shot. Good jab from Fury. He times Usyk coming forward. Usyk is leaning over that front foot. He's walking forward. Fury just foom, flicks it up, catches him. Now this 12th round was the most competitive and it was one of the better rounds from Fury outside of the, the two that he cleanly won. Now let's say for the sake of argument that, that I give him the 12th round and that and we include the, the extra point from round nine because it's a 10 8 round. The score is still 7 6 Usyk. 13 points total because of the extra point. The score is still 7 6 Usyk. So even with me giving all of the swing rounds to Fury and me being very charitable in my interpretation of, of so many shots and giving Fury extra leeway, he still loses this fight. And, and of course he loses it from the AI's perspective, which has 30 different camera angles and can calculate so much of like force impact. And that's, it, you, you have to watch it to, to know how good it is. But the problem is even in the big moments where Fury lands big shots, Usyk is immediately answering back. And generally, he's answering back with big shots of his own. So the big moments are kind of even or in Usyk's favor. And then in the smaller moments, Usyk is generally out jabbing him. And Usyk has those body shots that just are accumulating points. So it's it's so hard to, to give Fury um, any type of path to victory in this and and seven six is me being at the utmost charitable really it would be like eight five possibly even a nine four eight five is definitely more reasonable but truthfully Usyk was outboxing him and ultimately consistency accuracy footwork positioning superior technique those all won this fight whether it's by um one round or two or three the rounds where fury lost there's no possible way they can be given to him. Like those first two rounds, Fury just wasn't landing almost anything. And then, you know, like rounds 10, nine, so on and so forth. Usyk has the more dominant rounds generally. And the rounds where I give to Fury, those can generally be considered as swing rounds. So in, in summary, my devil's advocate scorecard is seven, six Usyk, but the more honest scorecard is like eight, five in favor of Alexander Usyk. So I, I tried to be as charitable as possible to see if there's any way Fury could possibly win this fight. And the answer is no, unless I just lied and didn't look at it frame by frame. So that's where we are right now. On to the next, we might be 
off boxing for a little while and then we'll return with some uh, Roy Jones Jr. because I got to finish breaking that down. Evander, Holy, Evander Holyfield versus Riddick Bowe. I got to finish breaking that down. And maybe that'll set up some cool stuff in the future, like what I did with Crawford and Mayweather. If you know, you know. But I'm going to look at some MMA, some kickboxing, some Muay Thai because I've been doing so much boxing the past few weeks and I love all the combat sports. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. I'm out, fight scientists.